Happy Wednesday. How you doing? Hey, I want to talk to you today about the second step to receive wealth from God. Second step. We got these steps we're going through. Today is number two. Huh? Say this with me. The rest of my life is the best of my life. The best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart, getting smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Great things are coming my way. Everything always works out for me. I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. Pastor Jim is the ultimate pastor. You know, the reason we go through this confession every day is because I want you to believe that you're a wonderful person. I want you to believe that you're smart. And I want you to believe that the rest of your life is the best of your life. I heard somebody say that 10 years ago in no November. No, probably in August or September. I don't remember exactly what day it was what month it was, but it was about a little over 10 years ago. And when that person said that, and it was a long ways from here, somebody, somebody just, I heard somebody say it. And I thought, you know what? I need to say that every day. And I've been saying it every day ever since. <clears throat> and guess what? My life has changed. My life has changed. Your life will conform to your words. I can't emphasize that enough. Your life will conform to your words, folks. Huh? Share this video with everybody you know. With everybody you know. It is so important. So important. You can save somebody's life. If they're sick or they're broke, you have them call me. We get them healed. People get miracles. We've had people healed off their deathbeds, especially with all this stuff going around. Amen. You have them call me. And if they're broke, they need a job. If they need to be blessed. Do you know most Christians, even the born again, spirit filled, Bible thumping, faith healing, tongue talking, meeting going Christians are not blessed. They think they are. How you doing? I'm blessed. Rah, 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 rah. They can't pay their bills. Nobody with the blessing of the Lord upon them stays broke. And that's a fact. If they're staying broke, that blessing is not working in their life. I'm going to make it work. That's why I'm taking you through these steps. Because I want God's abundance to be in your life. More than enough money. Enough to pay your bills and money left over. That's wealth. Now, there's different degrees of that. Some of you people out there are just incredibly, getting incredibly wealthy. And I praise God for that. But I want you to just to be able to pay your bills to start with. I mean, that was a big deal. The first month we paid our bills, we had $200 left over. I'm telling you what, that was huge. Number two, number two, we're talking about here. And make sure you call me today when you do your offerings and donations, because I want to speak God's word for word blessing over you. Number two, God says, but thou shall, thou, remember yesterday we talked about number one was, it's all about you. Well, it's all about God too. But it says, thou shall remember the Lord thy God. All of Deuteronomy chapter 8 is God reminding these people who are getting ready to go into the promised land. The, the whole book of Deuteronomy is God preparing these people and empowering these people to go into the promised land. Now, he empowered them back in Numbers chapter 6. But here, he is reminding them. They got all this money, all this wealth. 
Because they took all this, I mean, they took as much gold and silver and beautiful clothes and everything as they could carry out of Egypt. They took the wealth of Egypt when they left. God said, you will not go empty. Now here, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, he's reminding them where it came from. Mary and I are always talking about where our blessing came from. We always talk about where it came from. Because it didn't come from us. It didn't come, like some people think, from inside us. No, it came upon us. It came upon us. God's blessing, a lot of people say, well, God's blessing comes from inside you. No, it doesn't. It comes upon you. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law so that the blessing of Abraham can come upon you. It's something that comes upon you. And in Deuteronomy uh, 28, God, God says through Moses, he says that he will command the blessing upon us. This is something that comes over you. That's a spirit. The blessing is a spirit. It's a spiritual gift. And God is telling these people, number two, don't forget where you got it. But you, number one, shall remember. Number two, don't ever forget where it came from. And always give God the glory. And everything we have is because of the Lord's goodness. Everything we have, everything we do, every breath I take. I like that passage in the Bible. I don't even remember where it is, but it says, in him we move and have our and have our being and breathe and have our being. In him is everything's in him. Everything, everything is because of God. We never forget that. That's why we always I talked about it yesterday. We always give God the first 10%. That's a reminder that, that, that he wants the first 10%, folks. He wants the first 10%. Thou shall remember the Lord your God. Unfortunately, many believers, when they become successful, they forget. They forget where it come from. So many people. We had a church uh, a few years ago. We had a, uh, we were in a big church. Mary and I had a big church, and I don't know how many people were in there, but a lot of them. And we started speaking the blessing over them. Well, the blessings rained down on these people. It rained down on these people. Now, some of this might have been my fault because I didn't have a lot of wisdom in those days, but I was doing the best I could. And I think maybe I didn't emphasize enough where all this blessing and wealth was coming. And I mean to tell you, these people were wealthy folks. I mean, they got wealthy in our church because the blessings just rained. It just poured down into our church. And when we had huge financial reports, praise reports every week. And these people, some of them, they... they got a little, they got started to think a little bit more of themselves than they should have maybe. And they forgot that it was coming from God's blessing. And some of them forgot that it was being spoken over them. They be they forget. They forget how they got where they were. And, and we understand that people have worked hard to get where they are. But we worked hard all of our lives and didn't have anything. My dad worked hard all his life. And he died with nothing. Like most people do. Most people spend, even good Christian people, work hard all their lives and leave nothing to their children. David said, I am old and I have been young. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their children begging bread. And a good man, a good person, leaves an inheritance to his grandchildren. 
<coughs> well, believe me, when it comes to us, there's a lot to divide. A lot to divide up. Every one of them will be wealthy. Praise God. Praise God for that. Every one of your grandchildren should wind up wealthy. That's the way it should work. Huh? We worked hard. And now, the thing is, we're still working hard. Mary and I are, are doing the same thing right now that we were doing 20 years ago. Only Mary doesn't work at the dollar store anymore. She she left the dollar store to spend more time. Th this Our ministry has grown so big that she's doing this full time just to keep up with everything. And of course, Melanie's here. So they spend a lot of time together. And that's good. And that's good. So everything everything is, is good for Mary is enjoying this time. But she also works hard. And I work hard. I'm up, folks, between four, between four and five o'clock every morning starting. That's why I tell people, don't call me before nine, please. Unless it's an absolute emergency. Because we're working. This is when we get everything done. We have everything done basically in our ministry by nine o'clock in the morning. Everything, all of our work is done. Mary sometimes works in the evenings at it too. But after nine o'clock, I can start taking phone calls. So glory to God. But we're doing the same thing now that we were doing 20 years ago, 15 years ago, and 10 years ago. Only everything's changed. Everything has changed. God has given you a brain to think with, the strength of body to work, the health to function properly, and the skills to create possibilities. It's who we are. But we never forget we are where we are because of him. When this blessing really works in your life, don't forget, ever forget, that it was God who did it for you. It was God who put those people in your path. It was God who gave you this favor. The power to get wealth and the favor of the Lord are one and the same. When God gives you the power to, to get wealth, that power is actually a force of favor. And it causes amazing things to happen in your life. And you need to praise God all the time for it. Give God the glory because it's him and him alone who makes it happen in your life. Thou shall remember that it was God who made it happen for you. And God is spending this whole chapter of Deuteronomy chapter 8 reminding the people. You didn't have anything when you, when you were in Egypt. You were slaves. But you came out of there rich because of me, he says. It all happened because of it. God is very quick to remind you of who you are and who he is. Remember what he said to Job? He said, where were you when I created the world? Where were you when I did all this? He said that to Job. Huh? He put Job in his place very quickly. Well, I'll tell you where I was when God created the world. I was nowhere. He did it all by himself. I'm just praising God he lets me live in it. Huh? That he lets me do what I do. I thank God all the time that he lets me do what I do. And, to, and bless his people. And try to bless his people anyway. And to do the best I can. And that he has provided an abundant life for us. I never forget. We remind ourselves constantly that it's God. It's all him. It's for him. Remember, it tells us, the Bible says, that everything is by him and for him. Glory to God. Give him the glory. Give him the credit. Share this video with everybody you know. This is a wonderful, wonderful. These videos will increase your faith. And I will make sure that the blessing is upon you and that the curse is broken. I am determined you're going to live a curse-free, blessed life. And I will use the power in the name of Jesus to make it happen for you.